Saints Talk listeners, what's up? We back for another week. This is Saints Talk, the official podcast of New Orleans Dow Football. Welcome, guys. We back for another week. Football has started. I'm happy a game really happened. Nick is living his dream. <laughs> the Saints won. Everything is good, man. Everything is good. The site, New Orleans Dow Football, if you guys don't know what it is, floor slash subscribe. You guys can sign up, pick the best tier that works for you. I don't. I for, I've forgotten how many articles you've written this week, Nick. This week, Nick. I feel like you, we were just talking about it. Something's happened pretty much every day. Alvin Demario, football film study. Mike Thomas. I don't know, man. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. There's right been now. a major story every day for like <laughs> nine days, like since the clowny thing, and it just feels like it's been like nonstop. Clowny. That feels played, like last year. <laughs> they, they played a game and they they won. I don't know. It's like. The weirdest win ever because like the tone about it has just been so down yeah, yeah. um and now mike thomas is hurt he's gonna miss a game at least it's uh yeah at least huh at least they won a game though i mean they're one and off like <laughs> it, it's it, it was a bad here's the thing like let's just go let's just go right into it here's the thing like they never start really good last year they needed a 58 yard field goal to win the first game yeah this game it didn't it wasn't visually great right but like right. They, they still scored 34 points and they, and they won and they were very close to to having more points than that on offense so it wasn't yeah. it wasn't great like there's a reason that Sean was down on the performance there's a reason Drew was down on the performance but like relatively speaking no preseason first game of the season feels like there should be at least a little bit of leeway to see like how this thing goes before you know everybody declares that you know they're done and it's a defense team now and it might be a defense team now but like i don't think it's as bad as it looked last week we're about to find out though because mike's hurt man <laughs> yeah we, we really about to find out hey before we get started though who won the who won the bet from last week so what was it, it was i said three throws down the field he did two he did two no bro that the pass and the fingers don't count it's still a throw down the field no, no. Okay, so you said three, and I said two. So if the pass interference, yeah, you count, won it for sure, for sure. You okay, got then it. I won. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. yeah I'll you take got it. it. I definitely did, though. But like, I, the, I needed it on record that there was two. Like, you were trying to argue me during the game that it didn't count. It counted. That was a shot down the field. So it was the deal. dumbest, most ill-advised shot down the field of all time. <laughs> but it don't throw. matter how it got there. Like, I've seen, I've seen Russell Westbrook like throw a ball at the hoop to get a rebound to get the triple double. Like, you know what I mean? Like a rebound's yeah. a rebound. Like it's. Hey, you calling Drew Brees a stat panner? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, so here's the here's the deal. If if that would have been the third pass, the pass interference, then there's no way I would agree. Yeah, we would have count. counted it. Yeah, but if since I win with it, the, then it's a deal. So that's how I like it. Anyway, man. Hey, my name's on the LLC, man. So if I say three, it's three. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I think the boss lady got something to say about that. <laughs> she just be lurking in the in the cut, just, <laughs> just she's, like she's with me on that. She's with me on that for sure. Yeah, every once in a while she lets you know who she is, though. <laughs> hey, she's as right or die as they come, though. So I know, bro. She is. I mean, she let me know. So I mean, she's probably around the corner. So I, I, I know you feel like <laughs> heat right now. She's probably like looking through the door, like. <laughs> <laughs> you saying my name hey so um if you guys are on youtube you know um checking it out make sure you guys can look, you go to uh search nick on the hill for youtube the pods are here now um you know people like youtube man i got i'm i'm geared out in new orleans dot football attire i just feel like i need to say that because um <laughs> i feel a little exclusive i got like the level one employee outfit <laughs> absolutely yeah no question yeah like so if i like hang on for another month i might get like like i don't know yeah you like keep doing good you'll, you, you'll get the sweaters you know what i mean like we got the sweater we got cold. we got the quarter zips you know what i mean that's hey, that's managerial man. though that's managerial if I get the but, quarter zips like i'm you gotta let me tweet from the twitter account then <laughs> look man you're, you're on the fast track to you know running your own little your own little branch so hey, keep man. doing what you're doing man i'm just appreciative i'm just happy to be <laughs> i'm happy to be here i'm happy to work for a company like this man. <laughs> so as the ceo of this company what the hell are the Saints going to do without Mike Thomas playing this week? That's a big deal. So that I think is, I think we need to start with Drew because I think I think the Drew performance plays into the okay, Mike thing. It's let's the same, go there. It's the same point. So I th I think they're interlinked, and I mean Drew had one of his worst games in recent memory. Um, yeah, you know yeah. I don't think we need to, to sugarcoat it. Like that, the accuracy was off. Um, so but know, just talk about the difference between because, and I want you to speak to this because. National media is like wild 
right? <laughs> and, I, and I understand them being critical because I've been critical, you know, in just, you know, you know my takes, right? You have all my takes, but they've been falsely critical, right? And so they, the, 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 the talk has been like, you know, he can't push the ball downfield, which he, he, he's, that's not his strength, but it has been no talk about the fact that he was missing open passes, like from five yards away, instead of, you know, not being able to put enough arm strength on the ball. That's a, a throw down field. So I, I just feel like the narrative is wrong about how he didn't play well. And it's just like, oh, Drew, Drew didn't play well, and it has to be an arm strength thing. And I feel like that's just, that's just short-sighted. Yeah, so that's the thing. He, he was missing passes, like, in, in the flat. There were two of them that, that he just straight missed to, to yeah, Alvin. The one on the yeah. sideline was, was behind him. The throw that concerned me, like, really – like, those were bad. The one that was, like, the most jarring to me – and this is, like, getting, like, really deep into it, but it, it, was, a, it was a swing pass or a pass to the flat to the left side. Like, Drew put the ball on, like, Alvin's back shoulder. Oh, I remember, yeah, that one. Alvin had to, like, reach back to catch it and then, you know, yeah. kind of go up the field. And you, you never see Drew miss that pass. It's always yeah. front shoulder, lead it up the field, and yep. then off he goes. And that was just, like, the one where it was like, wow. It was a little but, jarring. Yeah. So, that, that, that was a little bit concerning. Um, you know, some of the other stuff, like, look, his arm is what it is, like, at, at this point. Like, exactly, if, if exactly. He if he doesn't see somebody get open, like, right away coming off the line of scrimmage, like, he isn't throwing that pass down the right. field. Like, it's just the juice just ain't there to, to do it. He needs to see it quite early. Um, the pass to, to Jared Cook to the outside was the best example of that. Like, he's throwing the ball while, while Cook's, like, on the hash. Right. To meet him at the sideline with the pass. And, like, that's just who he is now. And – I don't know. There's just some throws he, he's not going to make down the field. And, and that's just – I don't think that that's really a huge surprise. He can yep. do it when he sees it. The, the other pass to Cook, the, the go route. The 35 – was it 35 yards or something in the air? Yeah. I yeah. think that, that, that was pretty indicative of what we saw during camp. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, last year I don't think he's hitting that throw. Um, the end of the 2018 season, like, he, he wasn't hitting that throw to tag Ginn in the playoffs against Philly. Yeah. Like, he can hit that throw now. So, like – there is some improvement there, but like, if you're looking for, you know, that ball on a, on a line, like the out route, <laughs> like Drew's just not throwing that. Like yeah. Tom Brady can't throw an out route, period, at this point in his career. Yeah. So like Drew's still a little bit ahead of him on, on that. But I think the thing that, that and again, you, you can go through the film and that there is some stuff where it's like, man, he wasn't like seeing stuff. Right the mic away. throw, I didn't like the mic miss on the sidelines. Yeah. That was, that was super weird to me. And then the Alvin wheel route, those were, uh, those two yeah. were like, Mm. Yep. Yeah. And hey, look, chalk it up to I don't know, like I don't think you can look at this one game and look, I'm concerned. I'll I'll just be honest. Like I think I'm like, okay, well, like, because Drew's 41 and you know they always say they just fall off a cliff, right? And so naturally you say, okay, well, is this it? But one game is not enough. Like it's okay to think every season, okay, is this the last season? I mean, the guy thought about retiring. So clearly he's closer to the end than the beginning. And, and you know, I'm a believer of that more than anybody. And I'm watching, for, I'm looking for the fall off, but I'm not, I'm not making it after one game, especially when, you know, it's based on him missing throws that seem like that has nothing to do with his arm strength, right? Now, if the accuracy falls off, then it's over, right? It's over. But I just think based off this one game, nobody had a preseason. I mean, I just think there's a lot of factors that go into it. No OTAs and all that other stuff. You know, it, it, maybe it's rust. Maybe this stuff happens a lot when that we don't get to see, right? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. But uh, it's okay to wonder about it. But I just think you got to put it into perspective a little bit and not just say – because Drew's arm is the same as it's been – I don't – you know, I, you can make a case that his arm is probably a little bit better now than it's been the last few years because he's not injured. So those weren't not arm strength misses <laughs> in this past Sunday. Those were just kind of like, okay, this is a little weird. Let's see if this, trend's continue, this trend continues. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll look for it because, again, he, he's 41, but I'm not going to make any declaration after one game and look like an idiot yeah. when he goes 32 for 37 for 35 <laughs> right. next week because right. I, I don't know enough yet. And I, I didn't see – Nobody like, does, right? Yeah. yeah, I didn't see these these super concerning things in, in training camp either. So, I mean, if it was like he was skying people all camp or like the ball was behind people all camp, yeah. and I'd be like, oh, man. But I didn't see that. I, I think that, like, the timing's off a little bit. And, again, he has to throw with so much anticipation in that that I think not having a preseason, maybe a that's a good point. Camp, all that stuff that's plays into it. And 
look, if he got out here and he found out, okay, my arm felt 40 last year, it feels 41. Now I got to, I got to adjust a little. Now he knows where he needs to adjust and yeah. we'll see if he can make those adjustments. The other thing is, is Carlton Davis took out Mike Thomas kind of just straight up one-on-one, nothing super fancy. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of doubling here and there. Um, you know, they're playing a guy over the top, so I'm so good on Some going weird down zones the field. he was running into, but yeah, for the but, most part. For the most part, it wasn't anything super fancy. Like, it was kind of like a guy dropped on him, and he got taken out. And I think I think if Mike wasn't taken out of this game and Drew had his safety net, his banky, you know, whatever you want to call it, the guy that mm-hmm. he threw to 144 times on the <laughs> first read last season, right? the game looks different. Yeah, different like, narrative. He's hitting sixty five percent of his passes, and it's just like, oh well, Drew, Drew really didn't throw the ball down the field, but he doesn't need to. This guy's getting open all the time, and right, different you know, conversation. Yeah, I mean, there's only been I can only think of two games where where he's been taken out like that. This one in Dallas, a couple of years ago, on uh, mm-hmm. when he he was making the run for for the MVP, and then the Dallas game happened. It was the, the thirteen to ten loss, and. You know, I think what do you have in that game? 127 yards, something like yeah, that. Was it was bad. under that 150. Was yeah. And that was another game where, where he looked horrible. And it's just, you know, how much is he, how much is Mike's presence like help the aging process? Like if you take him out of this and you don't have this this automatic guy getting open all the time, are you noticing more? <laughs> Different ball game. <laughs> yeah. Is is he having to throw the ball to other people more? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I think there's a degree of it that he's he's very much helped. <laughs> drew age very gracefully and right. that's not taking anything away from breeze he, he's accurate and look he's he's making those throws to mike thomas that he was missing the album basically you know it's yep. short throws so so they were on point so drew there was something going on but the fact that you know your, your number one guy is taken away and then you know things start to look a little bad that's i mean yeah, I, you, I think there's some there's some correlation there it's not the whole picture but you know, if Mike's getting open that whole game, Drew's still hitting 65. What were yeah. you, 60% in this game, right? It's yeah, 65, I think 68, you know, 70% yeah. still, and we aren't talking about this. It's not a conversation. And even, you know, and I think even if he maybe hit, if he hits that, that, um, that Jerry Cook pass, there was a play to Mike where Mike got behind the defense and, you know, the ball didn't get there. I think if a couple of plays happen, I think the conversation is a little bit different. And I'm not, I'm not saying we, we shouldn't be talking about it. Like, I'm saying that, like, maybe it's overblown. But on the other hand, like, there's probably things that we might have probably should have been talking about before that were masked. And you aren't noticing it as much. And it's just like, well, he's hitting Mike on the slant all the time. So, like, who cares if he's not throwing this to yeah. Traquan Smith getting open right away on the other side of the field? Why would he even look over there? Right, right. Right, why but- would he look over there? But, like, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he wasn't having to look over there maybe – maybe we didn't notice things that were happening in mm-hmm. the aging process because Mike is just such, such right. a dominant and engulfing player in every game plan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually heard, I heard a guy who, he works for a pretty big football company mentioned that the Saints should take Drew Brees out of the game between the 20 yard lines and Come put Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill in. No. And this guy works for like a, a big time football company and like the reaction is like so overblown at this great. point oh my god and i'm just thinking like like just like just play that back <laughs> like just listen to what you said like are you are you kidding me man and and again i get the i get the conversation about him aging i get it but that's it's just it's i don't want to say dumb but it's like it's not that smart <laughs> so I just think the narrative is is a little it's a little wild. Now listen, if we're a few games into the season and this is still happening, then okay, but this no one has enough information, maybe other than someone in the building, to make that type of decision. So it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. It, it, the narrative is just is wild and it's off. Like I said, the the whole thing is like he can't push the ball downfield. I'm like, well, that's not the throws he was he was he was missing. We you didn't learn anything new about his downfield passing this week that you didn't know before, right? That's been Drew, so. There was a, it was like, I I can't remember what year it was. It might've been 14. Did the Patriots win the Super Bowl in 14? Oh gosh, I could check. Whatever it was, there was a game, like Brady came out of that game. They were playing the Chiefs, I think. It was a Sunday night or Monday night game. And like, he he got off to a terrible start that season. Seahawks won that one that year. 
maybe they got to the Super Bowl, whatever it was. Yeah, they, I think they played them. Well, that was Denver. But go, maybe, yeah, go maybe ahead, it was the next year. Well, I don't know. What, like, there was a Monday night game where they played the Chiefs. I think it was week four. Um, it doesn't really matter, like, the, the timeline. Yeah. They either made the Super Bowl or won the Super Bowl that year. Yeah, they won it in 15, yeah. Yeah, so I think it was that season. And, like, they got asked – maybe it was 14 and they made it. I don't know. What, whatever it is, they were super good. They mm-hmm. got to the Super Bowl, won or lost it. That's irrelevant. Yeah. The fact <laughs> right. is Brady got off to a really bad start the start of that season. And he got benched in a game. And, like, Belichick was getting asked, like, you know, are, are, are you done with him? Are you making a shift? Is, this, is it Jimmy's time now? And, you know, Belichick just kind of, like, grumbled it up. Brady comes back and goes on a run the next week. I'm just saying, like, you can't make, it, you can't make a decision yeah. in week one. It, maybe the Saints know a whole lot more. But I'm saying, I was, like, watching it. We don't have the information, man. I think it's wildly irresponsible to sit here and talk about it this is. dude being, like, like irrevocable aging being done like yo chill like let's see what it's happens crazy man. narrative i mean this, this guy was like i'm watching bit, though i'm watching him between the 20s i'm like benching between the 20s like that's like bro like who 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 does that like oh you're the 20 to 20 quarterback we're in the red zone we're gonna put you in I'm, it's just crazy man it's crazy I, we're i'm hearing some weird stuff i'm watching i'm gathering more information he's that's 41 I, Maybe I this te- is it, but not after one game. I got to tend to believe that they, like, they're going to figure it out. Like, they've been so good for so long. At some point, like, that's going to end and they're not going to figure it out anymore. And someday all these people predicting his demise, one day somebody's going to be right. And congratulations yeah. for being the first one there. <laughs> but, like, I'm going to chill and wait and see. And I'm not, I'm not in a race to declare it. Like, I'll wait yeah. and see. And, like, when it's done, it's done. But I'm, I'm going to – like, the first time I'm like, I'll text you one day and I'll be like, Kevin, I think it's done. <laughs> and I'm going to wait like two weeks. <laughs> two weeks, three see. weeks. Yeah. I mean, the the old saying, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? If you just keep saying this is the year, this is the game, this, yeah, of course you're going to get it right. But those same people and this same guy has been saying it for like three years, right? And all the guy done was – all the only thing he drew was done is won like the most games in the NFL in the past three years. So it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. I, I'm not going to say the guy's name because that's not how we roll, but this is it's just a little irresponsible. A little, little responsible, but we'll we'll see, right? Without Mike, I think we're gonna learn a lot. I think we're gonna learn a lot. And Can't hide no more. Yeah. So, I mean, here, who who? I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. This season, who do you think is a bigger loss to the offense if they got hurt, Alvin Kamara or Mike Thomas? You know, I think it's I think it's Mike, just because. Just because he's so much of the offense. He's so much of the offense. And, you know, when he's not playing Carlton from Tampa Bay, like he's open on every play. And it doesn't Byron really Jones or Darius it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter who he's going up against. Like he's going to dominate that person. He's going to get open. You're going to move the ball. It doesn't matter who and he killed that guy last year, by the way. He killed Tampa's. Like he had like 250 yards against Tampa last year in those two games. So things happen. But yeah, he got the best of them this game. I need to correct some too. 153 targets for three. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I said 144. It was 150. Don't want to get no emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're keeping score at home and you've been doing that, my bad. You were right. I was wrong. Um, oh my god. 114 of those came out in 2.5 seconds or less. Um, so like whoever's <laughs> taking his top. place, whoever's taking his place, better be getting open really fast. But like I don't think you can even. You, I don't even know if you. So you think he, he you think him more than Alvin just because of the volume of Mike? He's he's option one. He's option one. He's he's I don't know how else to say he's option one. And that mm-hmm. that's the guy. He's the most important player on the team. He's paid more. Um yeah. the you know, he's he's your offense. Like basically he's your whole offense. And you know, everything the the sun, you know, it, he's he's the center of the universe of this offense. And yeah, yeah. I think taking him out is the hardest, he's the hardest person to replace. Sean will figure it out. He's he's a creative coach. You know, I think in situations like these, it's get brings out the best of him quite often. You know, it, you, you gotta get out of your comfort zone and and now you gotta yeah. start looking around to all the you know don't free up Emmanuel Sanders, man. That's you know, hey, you know what? I think it's big fish time. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's gonna get more than five snaps, man. Put put my put my rookie tight end in. <laughs> oh, Troutman. All right, All right. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm bit. with you now. All right, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't get it at first. All right, yeah, no, no. No, you you the one that gave me the nickname. Come on, yeah, man. you're right. You're right. I texted you that the other day. Yeah, don't be playing with me, man. You left me hanging. I was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna ride this joke. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I, said that. Figure this out. I forgot. I called him that. Uh, <laughs> That's his nickname from now on, Big Fish, guys. So, so I'm letting you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like Sean off to figure out, you know, the best ways to use Emmanuel Sanders. And I think, you know, maybe a lot of the stuff we, we saw on Sanders on tape that was really good was like a lot of drag routes and, and stuff like that. And Mike, maybe some of that same. Yeah. You tap into that a little bit more because Mike isn't working that, you know, over the middle area of the field at all. So maybe you do some of that to get through that quick read 2.5 seconds ball out first mm-hmm. read. There he is. Um, you know, I think Jared Cook becomes you got to use that who, big body. You that's know? the guy I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, I think I think his numbers are going to go up a lot. Um, if you got, if you guys, whoever got Jared Cook for fantasy, man, <laughs> congratulations. I mean, the, <laughs> he's about to eat. <laughs> my, my mind went to the same exact place as yours. Because I, I think he's he's the safest, quickest outlet. You know, yeah. Let me get rid of this. There you go. That's the guy. Like that's the guy you're seeing really quick. Yeah, um, he would have had two big plays. This he would have had the only two big plays this week if he would have caught the other one, and he caught the one that was a big play. So I mean, yeah, he's someone to look at. You know, Alvin obviously is gonna. That's he's still. You know, yeah, he's already everything's built around him now. But like a healthy Alvin makes this hurt not a ten, but like an eight. You know, like I, I just think having a healthy Alvin while Mike is hurt, like it's. I mean, I, like I said, it feels a ten out of ten is like an eight, a eight, eight and a half. Right? It sucks, but you have like a ridiculously dynamic player who and you're not going to go against the best run defense like you know this is one of the probably one of the better defenses they're going to face definitely one of the better run defenses you know fastest linebackers they're going to face so I mean you got to think that when you look at you know maybe not playing a defense that's as good and Tampa's defense got my respect you know they they had to earn it but they did <laughs> and I just want to put that out there I do want to put out that we were we called big big slow grunt <laughs> too so I got my wrongs and my rights right so you got to take them both but they defense gained my respect that's and, the know, one thing we aren't talking about enough either on on the Drew thing is that like their defense was really good, really good yeah. it was really good like sometimes you run into a bad defense too yeah, playoffs, Minnesota. Um, it happens, man. Dallas that year that we was just talking about, they they were playing good defense. It when you I mean some of it was backers and you can take Mike out, like yeah, yeah. Some of it was bad defense, but Drew missed, but Drew still missed those throws. Yeah, there's a handful. But but they were they did some things. Sean, he spoke about how they were doing some zone things. And and I forgot about this. He's Peyton said that's the worst game he's ever called so it might have had a little bit to do with the offense being bad so we still on this subject but i just don't think you can pin it on one thing right i think um it's one you know, game, a little bit man. of it was maybe mike not having his best game drew not having his best game a little rust a good defense the sean not calling his best game so you know convergence is like i said it's usually not one thing it's usually a little bit of a lot so jared cook dropped a pass in the red zone yeah. Alvin had a pass to the flat that got tipped. What's that? Now you're at 20 out of 30 and, and you know, 41 yeah. points. And, like, are, yeah. we, are we talking about? Yep. And know they know still I mean? comfortably won the game, which is, like, it's just, like, crazy to think about. Like, they won. Like, the game didn't feel like like they were going to lose, like, after a certain point. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just wild, man. It's wild. I, 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 but, you know, just to, to the offense, like, I, I just think that, you know, you I, I can definitely see them like maybe moving to some more twelve personnel stuff. I think that's something that 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 you'll probably see. I know I think uh Taysom is a tight end, obviously. Um Josh Hill is someone they use. Now they got the rookie tight end. He looked good on his a few blocking snaps that you sent me, big fish. So yeah, I just think maybe they, you know, the offense is already condensed, right? And I just think that maybe you see them run some 12 and they can maybe just do some different things with formations because you know I'm not sure you're going to see a lot of 11 personnel just I mean I'm, I'm sorry yeah just like 11 with three wide receivers because you got Trey Quan, um Sanders and who's your third guy right so I mean Callaway Benny Fowler so I, I just think that may be something that they look to do man you love 12 man 
<laughs> Dude, I've been, I mean, you know, when I was talking, you was looking at me. I was like, why is he looking at me like that? Like, he's about to say something. Oh, man. I was like, I hope Shireen is in here, like, about to give him a black eye again or something. <laughs> <laughs> again. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you got a little bruise still up under there, but uh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, man. Um, yeah, look. I, it, I, might, I, it might really happen now, though, right? I got a reason in like, Come on, man. Give me a little. Come on. No, for lot. sure. For sure. I, I think you got to try to find some of that. Um, mm -hmm. Even if your other, you know, the other part of the, the, the 12 is, is pay some, basically, at tight end. If you got to go to more more of him, I think you should. I, I think now's the time, like, to, to get into that. Mm -hmm. You know, if Deontay Harris is ever going to do anything, now's his time. You know, now, now's the time That's to, to man, shatter the glass on that. Fast, man. <laughs> He is. He's fast, man. When he got when he got that, I think it was a screen or something. I was like, did he get faster? Like, I mean, he just he just looks super quick. So, good point there. Um, and then look, like if you're gonna if you're gonna do all the weird stuff, like Sean's been flirting with the Wildcat a couple hey, plays a season for, yeah. for three years now. Like, if you're Bring gonna it. do it, do it. Bring like I've it. seen, look, I've seen Alvin throw a ball in practice, and like I actually told Triplet last week, I was like, man, he needs to throw a pass in the game because like his spiral so tight. And then I seen wow. the Wildcat, and I was like, it's gonna happen at some point this year. Like at some oh. point, he's gonna throw a pass to Taysom, and I hope, oh god, I hope at that point there's fans in the stadium. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> I was like, if the stadium's empty, I'm so mad, bro. <laughs> yeah, if that happens in an empty stadium, it's a total waste. Like, <laughs> man, if you. Like if there's if there's twenty thousand people in the stadium, it'll sound like two hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, if that ever happens, man. I just need amazing. like fans to be like six feet away from each other outside the Superdome, yelling so they can hear it from the inside, man. Because that's gonna be that'd be crazy. That would be. But like, look, I, I I think they can do some of that. And like, if you're gonna if you're gonna do all this stuff, like get really weird with it, become really hard to prepare for. And that's another way too. Like if you just show a ton of stuff, you got to prepare for a ton of stuff. That's and that that's another way to win this game and, and to maybe get some easier reads and then you can throw in other surprises on top right. of it right and if sean just keeps stacking stuff and there it is man like so and you it, it's on him it's on yeah. him he, he's got to get super creative and i think he will i think he will i think these are these are the situations i think he lives so this happens and, and he's gonna just lock in and he's gonna figure it out but i mean he lost drew last year and he was like all right teddy we're gonna go oh and five we're gonna go five and oh Right. I mean, so yeah, I, I definitely. I, I mean, you could. I mean, losing a quarterback is that's like worst case scenario. So they have some experience without being one of the best players. So, you know, just with the weapons they have on offense, you got to think that they're not going to be as good, but they should be able to still be an effective offense if we think that they are still, you know, some they have they still have some semblance of the offense that they've been over the past few years. So, is. This is a wild question. This is a wild <laughs> question. But, it, like, okay, so you, you lose Teddy. And you can do a lot of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. You lose Mike. Like, does your offense have to change more? Maybe, I don't know, maybe just where you're looking. Maybe you change your reads a little bit. Um, That's a good question. I, th I think, yeah, I think, I think that does change, man. Because Mike is, like, he plays outside. He plays in the slot. Like, Mike moves everywhere. Right, you don't have that player, right? You don't have that player, and you know, I, I think that it puts the pressure more on other guys too, right? So like, it's easier to stop Jared Cook with Mike Thomas not in the game, right? So I do, I think there's some things that you, 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 you know, you definitely have to do, right? A lot of teams you just can't one on one Mike unless you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, obviously, right? But yeah, and so maybe that double team is not there and someone else is getting it. So, yeah, I do think it changes some things you have to do. You kind of got to – you got to have a better game plan because, you know, you you can't just – you don't have this guy who's just going to out-talent someone in front of him. In season, Sean will never answer this. I, I hope, like, by the time the owners' meetings time comes, like, yeah, we're, yeah. we're allowed to be around other humans at that point and we can gather mm -hmm. and go do this because, like, that's the time to – but, like, he'd never answer this in season. But, like, I, I'm curious, like – yeah. He's, he's uh, such a huge pillar of the offense. And, like, you know, I know he's just running this slant. Like, okay, like, for instance, like, one of their favorite plays is it's a play Drew comes up to the, the line of scrimmage. He counts the box. Depending on how many people are in the box, he's throwing a slant to Mike or handing it off. Like, you aren't – you can't – like, I guess you can run that play, but you don't have Mike anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, can – yeah, I mean, like, who runs that play? I mean, I don't know what Benny Fowler looks like other than being on special teams, you know, as a saint and – 
Emmanuel Sanders. It's just, yeah, it's just a lot of questions. I, I think you can see Cook running. He's a big body. He can, you know, box a guy out. Maybe he's someone that could run that slant a little bit because he's big and athletic. But like, who's? I don't know. It's just it's it's got it's got to change. It's got. I guess you could run it out of thirteen personnel, three tight ends, keep two tight. You you use Cook as your split out guy. You yeah. have to run other some other plays in the game though, like off of it. Yeah, you got to set that, that up. Yeah, you yeah. got to set that up. Yeah, that's a lot of running to catch that's, them linebackers going forward and get my throw a ball behind them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's too specific of a like a, of a look to, that's to just third down and four yeah. <laughs> in the red zone uh, situational uh, play. So, yeah. All right. So, man, uh, Alvin and Demario signed sign contracts. This 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 what. I forget what day. Demario was this Sunday and Alvin was Sunday. Uh, like, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. yeah, that was Saturday. So, man, that was recent. It's just, it feels like it was so long ago. Like four things have happened since then. The football <laughs> game with Demario contract and Mike Thomas injury and the Drew B's getting bitch. Like it's too much happening right now. Um, how do you feel about the Demario one? So it was for like eight per, or was it nine per? It was 327. 327. Um, okay, so eight, like 18 guaranteed. Okay. Right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 18. It was 18 yeah, yeah, like around 18 guaranteed. So, I mean, on the surface, right, it's two. I, I looked at it too. Is I said, okay, one thing, this guy, you know, was the best linebacker in the NFL last year. And, you know, he didn't get the 14 to $15 million that some linebackers got, but he's 31, right? So I'm guessing that, you know, he's. He's not a young player, right? But he's playing. He looks he looks young. He doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon. So it, it seems like one of those things where maybe it worked for both sides. But, you know, you have to think that DeMario kind of just wanted to be here because if he had anywhere a year, a year like he had last year, he probably could have went and got more somewhere else maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. How you, how you feel about that deal? Well, I mean, first of all, it was shocking that they could sign any other player because they already signed Taysom Hill. <laughs> that was all the money that they had on the cap oh, yeah, forever. Yeah, so yeah, they could yeah, never yeah. sign anybody else because they signed Taysom Hill. Yeah, yeah, they so, just burned money on trees. You know how they could have signed DeMario? Yeah. By, oh, wait, they still signed DeMario. Um, <laughs> but, and the running back. But, hey, I mean, who's, who's talking about that? God, man, the talking points, like, lately. Have just it's crazy, been, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, the cap's going to be an issue in 2022. There's, there's no hiding from it. If, if it stays flat, 175, if there isn't a huge bump, at some point, like it is going to be an issue, and like like hard things are going to happen. But it's not going to be this year. They can hide from it next year if they want to. You got to mm-hmm. get a little reckless, but you can keep everybody if you want. And then it's twenty twenty two, and you keep pushing, and the rug isn't getting bigger. Like you can only push so much under the rug. But right, like, right, right. Maybe it rebounds by then, and and you know it's not as bad. But I think that you are looking down the road a little bit, and there is an issue. But the the Mario contract specifically, yeah, I mean. You know, I was, I was, you know, frankly, you're looking at it and you're like, well, if somebody can't come back, like, is it him? And, it, you know, Ooh, man, he, took, been a rough one. he took a pretty friendly deal. I, I think that he wanted to be here. Um, yeah, I think the same thing. And it just kind of happened. And I think it's a great signing. He's, he's a key part of the defense. You know, like you said, it, it, he's getting, getting older, but I'm not really concerned that, like, you know, maybe by the, by the third year, you know. It, it's, yeah, maybe he's, by the end, yeah. He's looking a little old or whatever, but like right now, I I don't see it. He looks he looks great to me. He's still moving well. Um, yeah, he's moving really. He's moving like a <laughs> like he's twenty something, man. Yeah, that guy's a missile. I mean, that blitz. I mean, he yeah, he's just good, man. I don't I don't. He's like one of them good dudes you don't even have to talk about. You just you know, Demario Davis. He's gonna make a few plays every game, and you just move past it. All right, real quick, the Alv- the Alvindale. I I think he Alvin did pretty well for himself, huh? You know that that the numbers that came out in that the advertisement of the deal look really good. You know, it looks like he he got fifteen, fourteen and a half, fifteen million dollars a year. Yeah, fifteen three um, or something. You know, so however however much money they got into it, you know, it looks good. It sounds good. We'll see what it looks like when, when the actual numbers come out. I'm curious mm-hmm. to see if it actually looks like fifteen million per year. If it mm-hmm. looks more like a three year, thirty seven million dollar deal. Mm-hmm. You know, with a lot of money in the in the back end of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, he, he, he did good. He, he got a good amount of guaranteed money. You know, it isn't a massive amount. Like, some other guys got a little bit more. Um, but it, it's a solid amount. It's a good deal. And I think he did better than expected. You know, it was pretty, it was yeah. pretty dug in at one point where it didn't look like there was going to be a whole lot of budging on, on the team side. And, you know, it looks like there was some flex, but, you know, we don't – it might appear to be more flex than – there than you know actually exists so we'll see yeah. the, we'll see the real numbers but either way he, he did good he got, he got a good deal for himself and you know he, he you know he can earn it so yeah it yeah set himself i mean up pretty well yeah i think i mean the 
he looks – I mean, he looks – like he didn't have like crazy stats, but he looks like Alvin Kamara right now. Like he looks like he's moving well, and he was out running people to the edge and stuff. He looked really good. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I think it was Levante David who yeah. he beat to the edge. He kind of juked him a little bit, but they both, you know. But yeah, that was just an impressive play. So, um, yeah, I was, I, I think he's looking good, and yeah, he, they're they're going to need to lean on him with Mike being out for, you know, probably a few weeks um, as reported at minimum. So. So last last thing about this this game, we, I mean we haven't even spoken about the best part about it, which is the defense. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting, you know, it, they went against an offense with a lot of weapons. Marshall Lattimore is amazing. Um, Janaris, uh, Janaris, um yeah, Janaris Jenkins, uh, nice. Jack Rabbit picks it, pick six. Talk about the secondary, man. Talk about how those good, how good those guys was. Garner Johnson was all over the place. Malcolm Jenkins played well. Marcus Williams had an interception. I mean, it seems like everybody across the board had a, had a good game in the secondary. I kind of felt like they were going to be the backbone of the defense, and I think we saw that right away. Um, they came out. They 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 looked they looked really well. Um, you know, they made a lot of plays, like you said. Marshawn covered Mike Evans as, as good as Mike Evans can be covered. You know, I, that's kind of become like one of the best matchups in the NFC South. I, you know, Mike hasn't really done a whole lot. Kind of one-sided though, right? Is it, it like is. that good of a matchup? <laughs> but like the heat, the heat of it and the emotion behind yeah, it okay, is, okay, is extremely okay. real. I mean, another, another uh, like little fight. Gardner Johnson was in there just, you know, taking Hating the man's up. neck out right away. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. Um you know, um, yeah, but look, they, they played they played really, really good. I thought Malcolm Jenkins, like I, I was impressed with how well he covered. And, you know, immediately you see the, the – He's smart, man. Going covered. Yeah, 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 exactly. We spoke about that during the signing. I mean – And no knock on Vaughn. Vaughn does a lot of things well, but, you know, yeah. Malcolm's a better player in coverage. And at some point, Malcolm's going to not look as good against the run, and we're going to say, well, that, that's where Vaughn Bell was better because that is where Vaughn Bell was better. But, yeah, you know, in this aspect, it showed up really good. Um, You know, Jenkins was was – solid in coverage you know he he gave up some stuff before the pick six like aside from the pick six which was you know really good yeah home study pick the you deep know, ball obviously stuff, when that's the he was, he was playing off a lot i think it was kind of like designed yeah 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 up. i so, think yeah when it because it looks like he's is he's just keeping it in front of him on those plays that he right. gave up like i didn't see him impress man getting beat like i think the one on the, the, the deep ball was the one that you say okay you got got but the other ones is, yeah. it just looks like you just kind of keeping the ball in front of you and just you know buying your time so and I, I think Marshawn, you know, outside of the, the Evans stuff, I think he gave up that touchdown to, to O.J. Howard. It looked like cover mm. three, and he, he kind of got caught Busted covering coverage. a guy over in the middle. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, a couple things happened. It wasn't, it wasn't totally perfect, but, you know, I thought those guys played really well. And then, you know, we saw a lot of the dime looks that, that we talked about on here. That the they dime is doing. coming. <laughs> and, and we called that, man. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, listen, I'm taking my doves this year. You know, so, I'm, tired of being, I'm tired of being humble. <laughs> I think uh, – yeah, I mean, I think that's something they're going to do all year. And, and, you know, they have all these DBs. And, you know, I, I actually think that, like, they, they were a couple snaps ahead in nickel over dime. And I think if P.J. hadn't gotten hurt, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was my understanding that P.J. was going to be a big part of this plan. And then he wasn't. And yeah, I think that kind of, you know, maybe changed your numbers a little bit. But last you know, minute, too. Either yeah, way, absolutely. either way, it was going to be a heavy dime game. And, you know, I think yeah. we're going to see a lot of that going forward where it makes sense. Yeah, that's what a strength is of the defense seems to be. And you know, at the moment. And yeah, I just think that the, the man, if they, if they just stay healthy, I want to see this, this secondary all year because, you know, that's about as good of a skill position team as you're going to play. You caught them early. So, you know, obviously let's see, I, I don't, I, I, I don't think a lot of Gronk, right. I, you know, I, I've been open about it. I just need to see it with the guy. I'm not saying he's not going to have a good year. He may go for 80 the next game, eight for 80. Right. I'm not, you know, I just need to see it, right? Um, Mike Thomas. They were doubling Gronk a little bit on some third downs, too. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, think they yeah. also had a good plan on him, um, and they took him away. And I, I think that was going to be, you know, Brady's release valve very quickly on some of those plays. Mm -hmm. And, and He just know. looked like he was moving like a like an ogre, man. I mean, he, he just he, looks – He was, but then he, he hit that one seam route, and he was just – he was, like, down the seam like, like a flash, man. Oh, the one where the Jenkins kind of almost intercepted it. Yeah, he, Brady overthrew him a little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah. a little bit off. But like Brady – Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. He was moving though. He was moving up that seam. I mean, but you know, like, you know, is you know, yeah. I but I was run. just like, where'd that come from? Because like, I didn't see him like move the whole game. I actually like had to look for him sometimes to be like, where is he out on the field? Like, yeah. he he wasn't like commanding your attention. But yeah. like on that play, it was like, oh man, like he's like 
He can yeah. still run a little bit. If you ask me to run like a four four, like a four six, like a four six or four seven, I can probably do it once. No, you can't. But this what? No, I can run. I can run a four seven. You can't run a four seven. Okay, man. All right. We're gonna All have right, to four, see this. Four eight, four eight, four eight, four eight. I don't think you can hit the fours. No, i no, I hit I, I I hit the four this year, man. Come on. That's we're not talking about me. We're not talking about me. Um I can hit the four eight though. Don't don't play with me. You're like <laughs> forty, man. You aren't running a forty at forty. Why you put my age out there though? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? That's like that's like hip ten, information. Like ten bro. years ago, baby. Ten put years my ago. social security number out there. You're a stuff. decade past the fours, man. <laughs> Last time I tried it, like I just tried it randomly. It was four nine, and I was like out of shape. So I know I can get the fours. So mm-hmm. you're, you're telling me you can go hit you can go hit the the field right now and running the fours. No no warm up. No. Give me give me a, give me a couple of weeks like to oh, get okay. my legs oh, back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I can I can do I can hit a four nine like right now. All right, cool. So like, you're right like now. So you're like Eric McCoy. Chill out. I'm more like Teron Armstead. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm Teron, man. So, so you're yeah. like you're like a high end offensive lineman. Hey man, look, 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 look. <laughs> let's change the subject, bro. It don't sound that good he's when good, you see he's good. He's good in zone schemes. I'm a late in the career Marcus Poston. How about that? <laughs> How about a, this? I'm a 2020 Gronk. <laughs> Kevin's at his best in space. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. They call me Mr. Four Nine uh, until I put it on tape. Oh man, that's funny, man. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, just to the secondary, man. I'm excited about him. Um, uh, just be careful with the. Um, with the grading websites, guys, you know, we always I always like to just just bring that up. Just be careful. Uh, the coach said that uh, Marshawn Lattimore was outstanding, and um, that's the word I would take. So uh, just be careful what you read. Um, the D-line, I th- interesting. Sean Payton compared body type. He brought this name up, which it was weird coming from Sean Payton because – I don't rem- really remember him doing that, but he said Carl Granderson reminded him a little bit of Richard Dent, like in how his body, his body type. He said it in a WWL interview. And I was oh, okay, like, okay. I was like, wow, like, hmm, that, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. That's, that was a little weird. So he said they're excited about him. He said Trey Henderson played really well. He said Malcolm Roach played really well. So, um, yeah, I just think the D-line, you know, they didn't have a ton of pressures this game, but they had enough to affect Brady enough to not let you know to kind of disrupt the offense at the right time and I think you know I think that's good enough right that's good enough you're going to play another really good blocking offensive line this week and you know hopefully they have some of the some some of the same success but um yeah I think you got I just want to give a shout out to the D-line because I thought they you know at times they held their own this week and they played the run really really well too that's something that um you know that they're, they're, they're going to need to do all year and maybe get back to 2000 18 form when they were just like a really good run defense. Yeah, I mean they they dominated uh uh Donovan Smith. Yeah, Donovan Smith. Everybody was getting some of him. <laughs> it was like they were fighting who was going to rush from like, their left. Trey got his pr- his pressures against him. Uh um, Granderson had had his productivity against both him. Both of them had two I think against him and not a lot of snaps. So yeah. And then Wurfs did a good job on on Cam but you know he gave yeah. up a couple, you know, but relatively speaking but then, you know, Sheldon got him for a couple. So Yeah. You know, I overall I thought it was a decent game with a decent amount of pressure. You know, I thought I thought Rankins mm-hmm. looked, you know, pretty pretty good coming from where he's coming from. Um, yeah, you, you saw some good first signs, but again, like nobody was getting a lot, so he got some. That's that's kind of what you want to see out of him. Yeah, Cam wasn't super active. You know, he had a couple. Everybody had a couple moments, but it wasn't like overall a lot. Yeah, how much how much did they rush three versus? Because I know they do. They run a lot of three two dime three two uh, six dime um, three two. Yes, yeah, right math. Yeah, I, I just I forget how much of it was like three man rush and how much was it of it was, you know, kind of just guys going against. Cause I know I saw Rankins a few times. Like he, you know, he didn't fire off the ball and it wasn't. I think it was like the scheme rush that he was. You know, it was the way that he was rushing. It wasn't like it was an injury type thing where you know we were kind of just playing like lanes a little bit. So I, I don't know. I, I it'll it'll be interesting. I'll, I'm still waiting for the coaches' film to come out so I can get a better view of it. But it seems like some of the things they did with with pass rush, they they weren't always trying to get upfield. So, yeah, I mean, there was some conservative conservatism to it in some instances, but I, I still felt like you know Da was, was 
pretty aggressive at times. Some, you know, a couple times it was on detriment on a cornerback blitz. I, I thought that was a little bit questionable. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, they, they were bringing pressure. They were trying to get stuff going. You know, I, it was, it was pretty typical of, of how they go about it, but yeah, I mean, yeah. there were some, some three man fronts, but like when they do that stuff, they usually bring somebody from somewhere else and, you know, try to, try to manufacture. I think that's pressure. where DeMario had his sack, right? Where he, it was a three man rush and he came from yeah. second level and, Man, I just, I mean, look, I think that was McC LaShawn McCoy tried to block him on that play. And it, <laughs> I mean, he, I, I, I mean, I don't know. He probably should have retired after that because <laughs> it, it wasn't a good look at all, man. So, um, yeah, I just, I, any word on if Davenport is going to be back this week? And Peyton said to, about him on WWE, I thought it was interesting. He said, hey, look, I know, <laughs> I know we're, I know people are frustrated, but, you know, it's one of those injuries where if you try to rush it back, it'll, kind of get you know worse and they, you know he had a really good training camp so you know it seems like he kind of came out and took up took out you know took up for his guy a little bit there but he needs to get back on the field fast yeah I mean don't know definitively yet either way but um you know w before before the season started like I was told that like it, it wasn't it wasn't a long-term thing like mm -hmm. definitely the first week at mm -hmm. that point week two was like questionable but again Okay. This is this is a longer timeline at this point. So like as you get mm -hmm. into it, and then you see some guys play well, then you're going against the Raiders. Like that can change your calculation. I don't know what progress he made last week. I don't have an update since then. So, but look, every injury they have at this point, if it's if it's serious, the guy's going on IR. Like if it's a four week injury, the guy's going on IR. Like yeah. you aren't you aren't keeping the guy out unless point. it's you know Mike Thomas and he's going to fight you tooth and nail to to try to to come back. Yeah, maybe he still ends up on IR, but you know, I think in most instances <laughs> you aren't you aren't carrying a guy on the team if you're looking at him you're like he's out four weeks. So you know right away if an injury's serious or not. Yeah, and, you know maybe a guy doesn't land on IR and he still goes. It takes four weeks, but it, yeah, when it happened, it wasn't it wasn't a four week injury. So I see, I see. Okay, you know well, what I mean. Nice. Like you, you can get into things and like it takes a little bit longer, but like basically they're going to tell you immediately a guy gets hurt on Sunday. If he's not on IR, like they're telling you it's not a four week injury. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Cause, cause like you said, it's three, if, if it's, it's three weeks, you know, if you don't IR, you're on there for three weeks. So yeah, that, that all makes sense. Unlimited amount of guys can come back this year. So there's zero benefit to carrying somebody. If, yeah. If there's no hope of, of that three week time. Up. I, I, I don't know. I just wish they did that. I feel like it should be like that every year. I don't know. It just seems like it makes sense. And maybe it's just me, but yeah, it just seems like, it just seems like a good idea. So like, yeah, um, I mean, it, I think it's a better, it's a better role for the consumer of the game. Like we, we, we want to see the good players playing. We don't right. want to see somebody get lost and have no shot of coming back. Like, exactly. Yeah. I mean, so, so just, I don't know, like, I understand that it adds some strategy and you can't, you know, do some certain things and, and it may, forces you to make decisions, but like, yeah, you know, there's no sense in making this, I don't know. It's just kind of harder than it yes. really is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. I get you. So like I, if you put, if you lose Tron Armstead or whoever, like before the season, like, you know, you put him on there, he tore his, his chest the one year. I have no idea if he would have been ready to come back in January for the playoffs mm -hmm. or whatever, but like, what if Find he out. Yeah. But yeah, like, who cares? Yeah, like if he see. can come back at the end of the season, let him come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's better for the game that the yes. best players may be available. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. The other thing they do that I think is pretty stupid is that like you have to carry an injured player onto your roster for week one and then put him on IR, like to have a chance to, for him to return, which I think oh, is like, yeah, the stupidest yeah. thing ever. Like just let somebody go on IR and just like, if they can come back and they can if come he's back. on IR, yeah. If he's hurt, then if he's really hurt, then yeah. But I guess they're trying to stop teams from gaming it, which is, I don't know, man. I feel like the NFL like they're gaming it anyhow. Like, yeah, yeah. I think they're overthinking these things. So, um, all right, just Raider preview. Um, so the Saints are going Monday Night Football. Make sure you guys tune in. They're they're going to face the Raiders in their new stadium. Um, I was in Vegas uh, pre-COVID, obviously. Last it must have been at the beginning of 2019. And they were putting that stadium up and that thing, you could tell it was like this, you know, it was a pretty cool looking building, man. I'll be real with you. So um, anyway, the Saints are going to kind of help them break that in. And it still feel it still feels weird seeing Las Vegas Raiders. Um, just I lived in the Bay Area and just it was fun to go watch those guys play. So, um, but yeah, so the Raiders, they beat Carolina this week. 
uh, this past week, and the Saints are going to face him. So um, the one thing that 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 stands out um, that to like to me about the Raiders is um, they have a pretty good. I think they have a pretty good line, and so I think the Saints um, defensive line are going. That's one of the matchup you know matchups that they're they're going to have to win. Um, the Colton Miller, I think he was their first round pick from a, just a year or two ago. Um, he's played well. Gabe Jackson is still there. Rodney Hudson seems like he's been, like he's been playing center like forever. Um, he's still good. Richie Richie Incognito is gonna probably get a personal foul there. And I think Trent Brown, <laughs> that guy's dirty man. <laughs> he said what you want to say he's still around though. So shout out to him. And then Trent Brown, they he may play this week. He had an injury um, in the past game and he didn't play much. Um, or if he played at all, I forget. But he may be back uh, this week. So um, yeah, I just think. You know, it look, it's early, man. There's not a lot of film on these teams. But I think that's, like, when I think of a matchup for this game, I think that the Saints are going to have to win up front because they got, like, a really good running back in Oakland. Um, and they got a pretty good, pretty decent O-line. And so I think that's the area the Saints going to probably have to focus on a little bit. Yeah, and Ruggs looks like he could get down the field a little bit too. So yeah, he's a little fast. He's a little fast. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, he's a little – yeah, he's a little fast. That so, guy, um, he got hurt – Um in the game though. So I'm not sure what his, in, I guess the injury updates will come out this week. We Thursday, don't, it's just, yeah, yeah, but he only, he only played 17 snaps. Uh, Rogues only played 17 snaps. I remember reading that he got hurt, but he had like a big play, like, like pretty much like almost instantly. So he's, that's, that's someone to keep an eye on. You know, um, Waller's a good player too, obviously. Um, oh man. Yeah. The tight end. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how they do against him. You know, the, the one thing I do think that that might set up okay in this game is I don't think they have the rangiest linebackers in the world. And, you know, if this is a game where, where you want to get Alvin involved a lot, and you probably will, like, I, I think it kind of sets up for him a little bit. Yeah, one of their um, best linebackers got hurt too, though. I can't say his last, his last name, Nick Kowalski or something like that. So um, he's out, and he was like, I think he was their best linebacker. So that's going to be – that's a big loss for that defense. Yeah, so, I mean, look – in. You know, they were basically trying to man their their, their secondary with, with Saints cast-offs. Eric um, Harris re- revenge game. <laughs> hey, look, no, 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 no shade on Eric Harris here. I think Eric Harris has been a pretty good player for them. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. he's you know stuck around longer. But no, I was talking more about like Ken Crowley, uh, Eli Apple. Like that kind of tells you where they're at with their cornerbacks. That you know those guys were kind of brought in right away to to compete yeah. for starting jobs. Yeah, either one got one. Um, but you know, I. I you know, if, if you're going to be without Mike Thomas, this, this is the game the worst to do game. it. This isn't the worst game to be coming yeah, into. Yeah, because the rookie Darnell Arn- uh from Ohio State, I can't say his name, Damon Arnett, he, I think he's wearing a cast still because he got hurt in the preseason. So he's from Ohio that's, he, um he, he played in Ohio State. So uh, that's their first round pick. So um, he, he's one of the corners. The other one is uh, Mullen and then LaMarcus Jordan, the former uh, Rams. He's the slot guy. So, um, that you know, those corners are guys that you feel like you can have some success against. And then um Abram is back to safety, which um I think he was like a pretty high pick for them too. Um I think he's back playing from injury. So uh first round pick in 2019 last year. Yeah. So um yeah, I, I I'm with you. I think this is a secondary that, you know, you definitely think you could maybe explode a little bit. And, you know, you don't see the dynamic pass rushers that they, you know, on this team either, right? They drafted the guy in the first round last year. Um uh, Pharrell from I think it was Clemson um, and he you know he, had, he didn't do too much last year and um, he didn't have any pressures this past game so you know you definitely feel like the offense if there's a game where Drew's going to get back going then this is this may be one of those games yeah I don't know like this is such like a corny thing to say but I feel like this game so much more about the internal and what they what they can figure out you. and what they're going to do I follow you you know, I, I hate saying, like, overlooking the opponent or anything like that. Like, I just think that they should win this game. Yeah, there's no home they're, field or nothing like that. You know, it's just neutral. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And it, it's just basically if the Saints can sort out their turmoil, like, I think that they, they can gain advantages over a lot of spots on this team. Yeah. They have, again, they have the right coach to kind of locate the stuff. He's going to find those couple weak spots. And he's going to have to look a little bit harder because he doesn't have the default matchup that he can win every single time. And – He's going to find them, and they're going to exploit them. And I think there are holes here, like you, the secondary, the, the linebackers. Um, you know, I think they should be able to run the ball much better this game. Um, you know, I'm not going to predict that Drew goes deep, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, let's, all, right, it's, all right. So the bet, the bet for this week. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to this no, week. No, all right. All right. I, I think I was going to go to. Um, 
I'll take you three again. I'll, I'll ride it down with three. I'll go three. No, I'll I'm go riding down with three, man. No, oh, go. all right, all right, all right. No. <laughs> I'm going three. I'm going three. You're going three? All right, I'll go two. I'll go two. This no, time. no, no, man. You go three. That's just that's that's, that's rather we're both we, taking we ride, over. We ride together, we die together, man. I feel like Drew's gonna have something to prove this game. Like, look, man, Me too. He, that's why he, I said three. He just gum one. He just gum <laughs> one for no reason. <laughs> but but it's got so so let's let's get the rules in order. It's gotta be a completion or a pass interference. Is that yeah, just such a shot, man? Just a shot. It's so if he shot. throws it like fifty yards out of bounds, does that count? <laughs> like it's, we'll, have to, we'll have to evaluate the. <laughs> you your rules on the go, man. <laughs> I can't. I still can't believe he threw that one, man. I don't know what he was thinking. He was just going there with it. He did not care. He was just. And someone's like, "Oh, it's like a punt." I was like, and he has he had somebody wide open in the flats. By the way, uh, I forget who it was. He had but, he had a uh, he had somebody going up the other sideline. There was, was somebody Cook going. or Trey. Someone was open in the flat, and I'm like, Drew, he's right there. Just and he was like, no, nah. he, he yellowed that one. He had someone running free deep up the right <laughs> sideline. He just he was just throwing that. He was throwing that thing to the center. He did not care. He did yeah. not care. I mean, he was showing you he had the arm. He did not care. He told us. He told us. He said, "Man, listen." I ain't, I'm gonna borrow time. I'm gonna let it fly. <laughs> he, he told us. So. Oh my god! We can't fake shock, man. We can't fake shock. I don't know oh, what he was doing on that, man. That was, yeah, that, that, that was, was that was one of the wildest throws. I, that was I've, <laughs> I've literally watched every throw. That was among the wildest throws that I've seen. That was crazy. It was no chance that Emmanuel Sanders was going to catch that ball. Zero. And when they got the pass in the finish, I was like, man, listen. Sometimes it's better be it's better to be lucky because. <laughs> Like that ball, and someone tweeted me. I was like, "No, nah, bro, that was just a, that just was not the that that wasn't the throw." Man, that was um, crazy. I think Drew had his mind made up before that pass, though. He was like, "You know what? 50, yeah, yeah, I'm throwing it downfield. You know, forget the open wide receiver, just running, running, running wide open." So, um, hey guys, listen, um, go to New Orleans Football forward slash subscribe and get all the best Saints content. Hopefully, the Saints give Nick. And a little bit of a rest this week because my guy's been like, his, I know his Twitter fingers are probably a little tired, man, or or, or whatever we want to call him. Because um, I think there's been an article like every day, some I guess sometimes twice a day. Film studies up there. Quick reaction is on the website. You can go back and read about the Camara contract. Um, there's an article that went up there today about the Mike Thomas injury. So New Orleans dot football forward slash subscribe. Pick the best tier that works for you. Get the best things content on the web. Make sure you guys are following Nick on Twitter at Nick underscore Underhill. Make sure you guys are following the um, New Orleans dot football account N O D O T football. Make sure you guys make sure you guys follow that. Let's get those follows up for the New Orleans dot football Twitter account because um, there may be something good at the at the end of that for you. So with that said, thank you guys for listening. We will see you next week. We out.